going on? This is Jay from SonyAlphaLab.com and in this video tutorial I'm just going to show you how to record video with the Sony Nex 5N. It's incredibly easy and it's incredibly versatile and powerful and let me show you why. Check this out. First thing I'm going to do is click my menu button and I'm just going to go to image size here to make sure I have my movie mode set up correctly and I want to show you how I have it set. Alright, so right now I have it set to MP4 and I'm recording at 1440 by 1080 12 meg um, is pretty much the streaming size so you can change this option here this is the better option the 60i 60p option however I don't have um, software to work with that right now iMovie doesn't seem to support it and I don't have Final Cut Pro um, installed right now so it's just much easier to use MP4 and the quality I, you can't really tell because you can only upload 30 frames per second to YouTube anyway. So if I did have software to work with the 60i, I'd be using that and I could show you some slow motion stuff probably. Um, but I, I just got to save up for that. It's expensive. So, But anyway, MP4 works great and the, the quality, you know, you can't really tell as far as what we're doing here for demonstration purposes. So check this out. Just uh, set it up however you want it. And that's how I have it. The record setting, like I said, 1440. That's good to go. I can go in there so you can see. You got VGA, which is you know really small file, and then you have this, which is HD. Let's let's move on here. I'm just going to hit the shutter release button, and that'll bring you back to the main screen. And now I'm just going to hit the record button here on the top right. And there it is. It's recording video right now. So I'm putting my hand in front of it. You could zoom in and out, and it's recording. And it's auto focusing at the same time. So, what's so powerful about this though is that you can adjust things while you're recording. So, notice if you hit the bottom button on the pad here, let me just hit the center button again. If you hit the bottom button, that'll bring up the exposure comp and you can actually raise and lower the brightness of your scene. See that? It works really good. And if you hit the center button, when you're recording video, the center button changes. See how it turns to ISO there? So you can hit the center button and now change your ISO. You could raise it up, you know, lower it, whatever. Um, it'll only let you go to ISO 3200 though. It will not let you use these two modes for whatever reason. Or these four actually. It goes all the way up to 25,000 but it won't let you do that. So I don't know if future firmware will allow you to do that but in this case you're limited to this. So ISO 800. And now you can also change the aperture. So on the fly. Say you want to change the depth of field or something. You can actually you know, change the aperture, and then you can go and hit the hit the ISO button, raise the ISO, and that'll bring your screen right back to the normal, the correct exposure. So you just have to work the uh, numbers back and forth in order to even out your exposure. It's it's very simple. So as you can see, it's extremely powerful because you can adjust all this stuff while you're recording. And it's, it's just amazing. Most times when you do this with cameras, they, you know, they lock it down. As soon as you hit record, it's like you don't have any control. The camera takes over and that's it. Whatever it chooses, you know, too bad. But not, not on the, the next 5N. Um, it allows you to manipulate the settings and that's totally really, really powerful and cool. So one other thing I want to show you here is I'm just going to stop recording. And it's going to write that, whatever. I'm going to hit the mode button here and I'm going to show you what it looks like in manual mode. Check this out. Manual mode is the most powerful mode but it's also the hardest mode to use because there's so many variables. So now I can adjust the aperture, I can adjust the shutter speed and I can adjust the ISO. Right now it's on, let's see, I'm controlling the shutter speed. See how I can lower and raise the shutter speed? really really cool so you can use that to adjust you want to be above 1 30th of a second though otherwise your video will be choppy all right so let me put it at like 1 60th or so then I can hit this OK button now that it's set like that I know it that the exposure looks a little high I'm just gonna hit the record button here all right and now notice the center button changes the ISO and if I turn the wheel now my shutter speed is changing and not my aperture so if I want to change my aperture, and actually check this out, this is one thing I wanted to show you. You have a meter mode, a meter right here. See that meter? It says like MM. That's telling you your exposure is, is plus one, it thinks. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of giving you a clue as to where you should be. So 
it's a nice little tool there. But what I want to show you is how you change all these settings. Right now, if you turn the wheel, it's only affecting the shutter speed. So what you have to do is hit the bottom button on the wheel, and it, see how it just changed? Now I can adjust the aperture. See that? And again, this meter is giving you a hint as to where you are, which is really cool. So I know I want to lower my ISO, so I'm going to change that. The lower the ISO, the better, less noise. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my aperture to 3.5. That's good. Now I need to change my shutter speed because I can't go any lower than 3.5. So let me bring this down. Somewhere right around there, the meter's telling me that's a good exposure. See that? 0, 0. 1 40th of a second, f3.5, ISO 800. And I've been recording, you know, this whole time. So very powerful, uh, very versatile. And as long as you know what these settings are and how to use them, you really, you know, take advantage of them because uh, it's great features and, and, and very powerful. It allows you to be very creative, especially adjusting the aperture. So keep that in mind. And I hope you guys got something out of this. Again, check out SonyAlphaLab.com, and this video will be there as long as some new ones. I uh, should be getting the next seven pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, take care.